So um, electromagnetic fields, that is, um, that is a big one. <laughs> that um, from cell phones to clock radios. Um, so our bodies uh, use electrical impulses to communicate between cells and EMFs interrupt that. They interrupt the signals and they can suppress our immune system and disrupt our sleep. Sleep is so important for healing. We need to get a good solid eight hours of sleep. So when we're exposed to electromagnetic fields unnecessarily in our bedrooms, for example, um, it can really create havoc on our health. So, um, so the Cancer Research Agency from um, WHO uh, classified everything on the uh, RF, which is radio frequency EMF spectrum, as a possible human carcinogen, putting it in, in the same category as DDT. This is the World Health Organization. This is from May 2011. I mean, they're classifying this. So, um, cell phones. So, how many of you are wearing your cell phones? You know, I know a lot of women, um, when they're exercising, they're putting their cell phones in their bras. That's really not a good place to store it. <laughs> um, I hope that you, that you don't do that. So, um, if you must, you know, I go out, I walk every morning with my dog, I put my cell phone on, um, airplane mode, so at least I'm not getting that constant um, information from the, the cell tower if I need to um, look at my watch or whatever f as a clock. And also when, when I'm sleeping, if I want to use it as a, an alarm clock, airplane mode and away from my head. So distance is key. Um, pregnant women, definitely keep it away from your abdomen and don't wear them in your bras. So cordless phones, okay, there's, a, there's the base station and then there's the, the, the little uh, other handheld. So what's happening is they are communicating 24-7. They're, they're constantly talking to each other. And um, when I go into homes and I bring in my meters and measure, these have a higher um, incidence of, of radiation than cell phones do. So I tell people, you know, especially not to have the base station in your bedroom. But if you can get away without using um, a cordless phone, please do it. Get a, get a landline, get a plug-in, um, or just have the one without talking to the other. You know, that, that would be the, the best. Um, it's called DECT, D-E-C-T. If you look on the bottom, DECT technology, that has this, the highest uh, field. And microwave ovens, um, gosh, uh, they all leak. I mean, I was shocked, even the brand new ones. Um, I have this Gauss meter, and I will put in a glass of water. I always show this to people when I go into their homes, that their microwaves l are leaking. So I turn it on, and we have to step back at least five feet to get away from the field, because a normal field should be about 0.01, when I turn the microwave on, it goes up to 40, 50, 60. So you have to keep back, back, back. And so um, I remember I went into uh, this one woman's home. She had a galley kitchen, and um, she would use her microwave five, six times a day to heat up her tea. And then she had uh, ch small children, and they'd come home from school, and they'd make popcorn, and they'd sit there with their nose right up against the glass, and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, you know, our, <laughs> the microwave works by uh, vibrating water molecules. Well, we're mostly water. Their brains were being like, you know, <laughs> so it wasn't, uh, it wasn't good. And so I had her get rid of the microwave and, you know, she wasn't happy at first, but then, you know, she's like, well, wh how am I going to make popcorn? Easy. I mean... <laughs> You get a pot, you know, you put a little coconut oil in it, and then you put some curdles in, you turn it on high, put the lid on, shake it, and then in five minutes you have popcorn. I mean, it's not that hard. We just get used to um, this lifestyle, and we think that it's safe. It's really not so safe. Um, I was at this other home, and um, a woman had a, a counter, um, an island, a center island in her kitchen, and she had a microwave in there, 
and then she would plant her little baby on the back of the microwave. Now, most microwaves are set into walls, and so you can only really measure what's coming out the front. What I didn't know was, because hers was in her island, I could measure the back. The back was five times higher than the front. So this little baby was being really irradiated. And I said, why are you using a microwave every day? She said, well, I make instant oatmeal. And I just thought, oh my goodness, really? <laughs> so, I mean, she just didn't know. So when she saw, you know, that this, w this was a harm to her child, she stopped. And oatmeal, my goodness, you could make oatmeal, you know, one or two minutes in a pot. You don't have to use a microwave. So um, this is a, a quote from a, a former vice president of Raytheon. He says that microwave energy rubs the molecules of food together. It vibrates 3,000 million times a second. Wow. Think about that. And that's, that's being, you know, you're being exposed to that every day. And plus, they've done studies on uh, seeds that don't germinate with, uh, if, if the microwave, uh, if the water's been heated in the microwave that they use to germinate the seeds, that the, this, the microwave water is not helping to germinate the seeds. The water's become dead. So, um, you know, it's just better to get an, either an instant hot or boil up your water, but don't put it back in a microwave. Okay, so let's talk about blue light. Um, yeah, you're saying. Okay, good. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Getting rid of her microwave. Very good. Um, so, blue light um, at night, um, the, the scre our screens, our computer screens and our phones emit blue light. And so, what that does is it suppresses melatonin. And so, we need melatonin um, to sleep at night. And so, if it suppresses it, then you're wondering why are you up and not, and not being able to sleep? One of the reasons could be from, from being on your screens. So the, the solution, um, okay, so you want to remove electrical me, uh, equipment from your bedroom. And um, sometimes I have people you know, shut off the Wi-Fi at night. Um, that would be really ideal. And sometimes I'll actually check the circuit breaker and turn the circuit breaker off in the bedroom completely. So just, just calm the whole room down. Um, Okay, what's on the other side of your walls? I wanted to tell you this story. Um, uh, there was a little baby who wasn't sleeping, and uh, I came to their home, and um, there was a huge field coming off of the wall where the crib was. Now, the baby had a baby, there was a baby monitor in the crib, which shouldn't be in your crib. If you want to have a baby monitor, have it at a distance. You know, you can hear that baby. It doesn't have to be right on top of it. It's, it emit, these baby monitors emit um, high fields. But the wall had a huge field. And I asked the mom, what's on the other side of the wall? And she said there was a refrigerator in the garage. So we moved the crib to the other side of the wall, and the baby slept. So um, pay attention to what's on the other side of your wall. And I had. I told the story and somebody emailed me and she says, what should I do? I have a, a giant uh, sub-zero refrigerator on, my other, on the other side of my headboard. I said, move your bed, you know, <laughs> really, move your bed. It's not that difficult. So, um, so she was able to do that because, again, the fields drop off pretty dramatically. So to get um, good night's sleep, you know, try to avoid bright lights two hours before bed. And then there's something called an F.Lux app on the computer and um, night shift, on, I have it on my iPhone. So what, it, what the F-Lux does is it makes the screen amber. So instead of that blue light, it starts to kind of, um, it, it goes by the time of evening, and by 8 o'clock at night, if I'm on my computer, it sort of becomes this amber color. So it, it has uh, less impact on, 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 the me on the melatonin. Yes, you have a question? Sure, you can, you can wait to the end. Okay, thank you. Uh, the other thing that I do, which I find really helpful, um, is I measure fields. I have a Gauss meter, an RF meter, and also this um, Stetzer electrosurge meter to measure dirty electricity in the walls. So 
Dirty electricity are these microcurrents that, that occur in the, in the walls due to dimmer switches and everything that's been plugged into the walls. And I find that um, when I can get the dirty electricity down, uh, it makes a huge difference. So um, a lot of times things are miswired. Some electricians you know, don't know what they're doing and then they're crossing wires and it creates this very high field. And I remember going into one woman's home and I could feel it. As soon as I walked in there, I just said, oh my God, you're the, my, you know, the hair started standing up on my arm. And it turns out that the previous owner had died of Parkinson's disease and, and she was worried, you know. And so the fields in that home were extraordinarily high. I don't know why, but, um, but I, we plugged in um, these green wave filters and it, it, what they do is they just mitigate, they just calm the whole thing down. So I've gone into my dentist's office and installed these uh, plugs because uh, the fields were very high there. And when I came back, like the next day, the, all the, like, the employees were coming up to me. What did you do? It's so common here. We're not fighting anymore. I just, it, was, it was very interesting. Um, they just said that they just felt a difference. And this is not placebo, you know, because they didn't even know what I was doing. So um, anyway, th this is, you can find this on my website. Uh, I have um, information about, the, about this. Thank you.